This Christmas brought some fair weather, but now that the holiday is over and the work week is about to begin, some messy winter weather is moving in. Good evening, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. I'm Dustin Blutkowski. Amanda Hill is off tonight. Let's get right to meteorologist Jess Conley tracking that storm expected to be here in less than 24 hours. Hi, Jess. Hi, yeah, it will move in tomorrow. We had a nice quiet day today and it's still pretty quiet out there tonight. Mostly clear skies are around and that's letting temperatures cool off quite a bit. You can see satellite radar really not anything going on. But look off to our west. We will see a storm move into our area for tomorrow night and into Tuesday morning. It is going to make travel tricky. We will talk about that much more coming up. Temperatures right now, though, on the cool side, 15 in Bangor. It's 20 in Portland, 11 right now in Rumford. Look at the temperature change from this same time last night. Maybe you were out still doing some uh, Christmas Eve festivities last night. It is much cooler out there tonight, 22 degrees cooler tonight in Bangor. We do have winter weather advisories in effect for all of the areas shaded in purple. Only exception is the coastline. These go in effect tomorrow at 5 o'clock and last through Tuesday morning. Again, it looks like we'll see some wintry precipitation. We're talking sleet, freezing rain, uh, possibly some snow too, especially for northern portions of the state of Maine. We'll talk about it all coming up in a little bit. Here's a look at our headlines. A cold start for the day tomorrow after the chilly overnight uh, temperatures tonight. We'll see some snow, ice and rain Monday night into Tuesday morning. It's going to make it a mess for Tuesday morning and then more snow is possible for Thursday and Friday. And we're talking about much more snow possible by the end of the week. Dustin. All right, thanks, Jess. We'll watch out for that. Police say a man is dead after trying to burn down the home of his estranged wife, then stabbing himself. It happened shortly after midnight in Fairfield at a home on Norwich Walk Road. That's where police say 63 year old Terry Whitney used a propane torch to set fire to a house and two cars, all while his former wife, 65 year old Diane Whitney, was still inside. Police say the man ran around the home when they arrived and they tried to tase him. That's when he stabbed himself with a kitchen knife in front of the officers, according to officials. Whitney later died from his injuries. His ex-wife Diane was not injured, but her house was heavily damaged in the fire. Police say Diane had a restraining order against Terry because of another domestic violence incident that happened in October. A police officer rescued a man from an apartment house fire early this morning. 30-year-old Wade Wellner was taken to Maine Medical Center with severe smoke inhalation. There was only one other person inside at the time, and they were able to escape uninjured. The fire broke out inside Wellner's second-floor apartment, but investigators are still working to determine the cause. A bunch of people in Samford got some special, maybe unexpected Christmas gift today. On Friday, a woman used a popular Facebook page in the city to set up a secret Santa gift chain. She thought it would be a simple, fun way to spread Christmas smiles, but 200 people ended up joining in on the fun. I tried to jump in too and found out the people finding the gifts were a lot better at it than me. I've got to admit this has kind of been a frustrating process. Every time I go to find somewhere where there's a gift that's supposed to be there, I haven't been able to do it because somebody comes before I get there and takes the gift away. Right here there was supposed to be one right under this holly bush. And 15 minutes ago, somebody came and took it. So now I'm just sitting here trying to figure out what the heck to do. Obviously, I was in the Christmas spirit this morning after searching for secret Santa presents for hours. I had yet to find one. At least I wasn't alone. We ended up down by the, um, the airport. The airport, that's where the GPS took us. Uh, we went to the cemetery. We haven't we found nothing. Little Cory card. All right, Cory, come back. We'll go to another place was running into the same problem as me. We have been looking out here for an hour. Despite the struggle, the cards said they're having fun. It's been an enjoyable afternoon. We don't have much family, so we kind of been doing this as a family today. That, according to the Secret Santa's creator, is the whole point. There's been people saying that, you know, they they were depressed this Christmas. Christmas time is depressing for them, or they just weren't in the spirit, and this is really change them. Megan Bolter first posted about pulling together a secret Santa on Friday. People just jumped on it. They thought it was so fun. And sees it as a positive distraction for adults, not just kids. People are always so busy, especially this time of year. Her husband said, go for it. And is surprised at how the word got out. In Wisconsin. I'm like, Wisconsin? Where? That's broader reaching than I ever imagined. I, for one, can say how gratifying it is to find yes. a gift and can imagine how the couple who kept this package feels tonight. I don't think of it as a contest. I just think it's a great way to give back to people. The lessons learned, timeless. 
even if the giving is a little 21st century. It's interesting to say what else can we also give to others. Still helping Bangor's needy 23 years later, Mana Ministries provided food to more than 150 people today. They packed the hall at the city's Columbia Street Baptist Church. More than a dozen volunteers rallied to prepare and serve the meal. The dinner went on despite the nonprofit's recent financial hardships. For folks serving the food today, the event has a special meaning. Today is just about humbling and ha having support for one another. Um, it's very important for us to stay together and to give each other hope and for a future. And people that don't have families, we are one family together. It's sort of, uh, in a way, starting over again and, and just uh, seeing uh, the people are still asking for help and we're able to help, so uh, we're just pleased to do it. Organizers say the need is greater, especially this time of year, and they will continue their efforts to help those in need in the Bangor area for as long as they can. Pe 92 people on board a Russian plane headed for Syria crashed into the Black Sea last night. Thousands of rescue workers were searching the undersea crash site, but there appeared to be no survivors. So far tonight, 11 bodies have been recovered. The plane was carrying a world-famous Russian military band headed to a performance at a military base in Syria. Now investigators are searching for clues in the wreckage that could tell them what caused the crash. The transport minister says they have not ruled out terrorism yet. The Queen of England is again facing health issues this week. Earlier, Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip postponed their traditional trip to the country for Christmas because the two were suffering from severe colds, according to palace officials. They were eventually well enough to make the journey, but traveled by helicopter instead of by train. And today, officials say the Queen was again feeling unwell and did not go to church for Christmas services for the first time in three decades. Queen Elizabeth is the world's longest ruling monarch and is 90 years old. Although she was sick today, Buckingham Palace released her pre-recorded Christmas message during which she praised Britain's Olympic and Paralympic athletes. there were so few of them. I often draw strength from meeting ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Volunteers, carers, community organizers, and good neighbors. Unsung heroes whose quiet dedication makes them special. They are an inspiration to those who know them. Even though the Queen couldn't make it to church this Christmas, other members of the royal family made the traditional visit. Prince William and his wife Kate brought their children, Prince George and Princess Charlotte. Also the Queen's husband, Prince Philip, was well enough to make the trip. He also came down with a cold earlier in the week. And America's first family took some time this week to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. The Obama, this will be Obama's last holiday season in the White House before the Trumps move in, and it seems President-elect Trump is making foreign policy even before he moves into the Oval Office, calling out the sitting president for his tense relationship with Israel's prime minister, NBC's Kelly O'Donnell reports. The president-elect was greeted with applause Christmas Eve as the Trump family attended services in Palm Beach at the church where Donald and Melania Trump were married. While the Obamas enjoy their annual Christmas trip to Hawaii, they release their final holiday video. So as we look forward to the new year, Let's resolve to recommit ourselves to the values we share. 25 days left in the Obama presidency, and today the tense relationship his administration has with Israel soured even more. At a cabinet meeting, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made a startling allegation that the U.S. secretly led the United Nations Security Council to admonish Israel for its settlements in the West Bank. As I told John Kerry on Thursday, Friends don't take friends to the Security Council. Friday, the U.S. declined to block the resolution with its veto and chose not to vote. Netanyahu said today, we have no doubt that the Obama administration initiated it, stood behind it, coordinated on the wording, and demanded that it be passed. Netanyahu vented his frustration to ambassadors from Security Council nations, calling them in on Christmas Day and sent a very loud signal today, looking past the Obama presidency. Prime Minister Netanyahu is looking forward to working with President-elect Trump uh, in our quest for peace and in order to further strengthen the relationship between Israel and the United States. Israel warned the Obama White House it would seek help from Trump, who lobbied Egypt to kill the resolution and tweeted his support for Israel, claiming the big loss will make it harder to negotiate peace. 
Trump's pre-oath of office involvement is quite unusual. You really haven't seen a situation like this where a president-elect is speaking out on all sorts of issues in a way that is almost drowning out the person who is still president. That's NBC's Kelly O'Donnell. The song Last Christmas has an especially sad meaning this year with the death of pop star George Michael. The British singer rocketed to stardom with the band Wham! and then went on to have a long solo career. Michael's publicist said in a statement today that he passed away peacefully at his home in England. Michael was 53 years old. He became a teen idol in the 1980s as the lead singer of Wham, delivering a series of hits such as Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go and Freedom. As a solo artist, he developed into a more serious singer. He sold well over 100 million albums globally, earned numerous Grammys and American Music Awards, and recorded duets with legends like Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, Luciano Pavarotti, and Elton, and Elton John. But his fame sometimes made his personal life difficult. He had some run-ins with the law for drunk driving and drug use. Later in life, he became a figure in the LGBT community, raising money for AIDS research. On social media today, some of the biggest names in entertainment shared their grief. Elton John shared a photo on Instagram saying he lost a beloved friend today, calling Michael a generous soul and a brilliant artist. James Corden called him an inspiration. George Michael was one of Corden's first guests on an early version of Carpool Karaoke, which would eventually turn into one of Corden's most popular comedy segments. News Center will be back after this. It's your last chance to save during the final days of the Ford year end event. Hurry in for up to 11,000 total savings on F-150. That's up to 11,000 total savings. Ford, giving drivers the most five-star ratings and the highest owner loyalty. That's how you become America's best-selling brand. Hurry in for up to 11,000 total savings, plus an additional 1,000 smart bonus cash on F-150, or lease for just $1.99 a month. Big things are happening at Route 1 in Wiscasset. Did I hear somebody say big? It doesn't get any bigger than Big Al's fireworks outlet on Route 1 in Wiscasset. Look at what we've got waiting for you. July 4th parties, family parties, holiday parties. I've got the biggest, I've got the best selection of fireworks right here. Boom! More bang for your buck. This is Big Al saying it doesn't get any bigger than this. Route 1 Wiscasset, the place to be. You found the perfect car for you on Cars.com. <laughs> I'm a robot. Yeti. <laughs> Tents up, guys. And use cars.com to find a place to service it at a fair price, too. Signal, signal. Hey, guys, how's it going? That's not even music. Hey. Now, when you're ready, you can sell your old car and find your new one, all on cars.com. You know us for shopping, and now we're there for every turn. Cars.com. Merry Christmas from all of us at Rennie's. Well, I was stuck indoors or in the car all day, even though it was kind of pleasant outside. What yeah. did you do today, Jess? It was. I uh, enjoyed some time with my family today. How so nice. It was pretty nice. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it was enjoyable. It was pretty nice out, it too. It is. We had some, uh, you know, some sun. Temperatures weren't too bad. A little breezy, though, today, and it's cooling off quite a bit tonight already out there. 20 degrees now in Portland. It's 15 right now in Bangor, and the temperatures will just continue to drop as we go throughout the next couple of hours. So if you're uh, headed out early tomorrow morning, it is definitely on the chilly side. Winds now not too bad. We had some very windy conditions earlier this afternoon. Wind gusts as high as 40, uh, even in the low 50s, 50 mile an hour range in some spots earlier. But obviously things have really calmed down now. But even with just a little bit of a breeze, it feels even colder. The wind chill uh, is making things feel like it's in the single digits and teens. Feels like five right now in Bangor. Feels like 12 degrees in Portland. So again, if you're going out at all early tomorrow mor morning, maybe you're picking up on those uh, sales on the wrapping paper and all that kind of stuff tomorrow. It is going to be chilly out there. You can see we have clear skies right now. And as we go into tomorrow morning, we'll start to see those clouds 
move in. This next system here is on the way for tomorrow afternoon and evening. You can see uh, bringing quite a mess of precipitation to parts of the country as it moves into our area tomorrow. Going to be a pretty similar story. Let's go through it hour by hour here. So 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, maybe you get to sleep in a little bit, maybe you have the day off from work tomorrow. Those clouds will start to move in. Notice the temperatures definitely on the chilly side, mainly in the teens waking up tomorrow. By noon, it's still staying fairly cool in the teens and low 20s. Those clouds really started starting to thicken up by again around noontime. Then as we get into tomorrow afternoon and evening, here it comes. We have some snow, uh, icy precipitation as well. We're talking about sleet and freezing rain possible with this one. So you know it's going to be a mess late tomorrow night and through Monday morning too. So just make sure to take your time on the roads. Uh, be safe out there, certainly. Now watch what happens as we go into Monday evening. Those temperatures will actually start to warm up ahead of this system as warmer air filters into the area. So some of us, especially in central and southern Maine and into New Hampshire too, will change over to some rain by uh, the overnight hours Monday into Tuesday. Parts of northern Maine though will stay as uh, mainly snow and some frozen precipitation as well. Snow, sleet and freezing rain. Uh, by Tuesday morning we'll really start to clear out. Check out those temperatures Tuesday. 40s and low 50s even for some of us, way above normal for this time of year, but those will quickly cool as we get into the day on Wednesday. Shouldn't be too bad though, only down into uh, the 30s for Wednesday. Just want to show you what the models are thinking for snowfall totals. This is just through Tuesday morning. Uh, most of us will just see about a coating to an inch as you get north of Bangor, two to three inch range and very far northern Maine up in northern Aroostook County could see at five to six inches. Uh, officially, this is pretty much what I'm thinking again. Bangor area, maybe around an inch or two as you head closer to Millinocket, maybe around three inches. Most of us will be changing over to some sleet and freezing rain again. Uh, really, the main story with this is if you are doing any traveling late tomorrow night or early Tuesday morning, it is going to be slippery. Please take your time out there. Leave plenty of time just to get where you need to go. Uh, winter weather advisories are in place for all of the areas shaded in purple. That is for tomorrow night and into Tuesday morning. Seas for tomorrow around 2 to 4 feet. Winds from the northeast 5 to 10 knots becoming southeast with that snow and rain developing. Here's a look at your forecast. As we go throughout the week, again, a little bit of a messy Monday night, definitely. Tuesday morning could be pretty slick as well, but then things will clear out as we go throughout the day on Tuesday. So definitely good news there. Partly sunny skies for Wednesday. Temperatures will cool off a little bit more as well. And then we're talking about another system as we get into the day on Thursday. It looks like many of us could see a couple inches of snow with that one. Model's not really agreeing quite yet, but we are watching that definitely as we go through the week. So uh, a messy start to the week and it looks like some snow Maybe later the first on big one, too. the bigger Hopefully. numbers, double digits? <laughs> Maybe, for some okay. of us. We'll see. All right, yeah. well, Kayla's got your full sports lineup next and there was a lot of basketball going on today? Yeah, there was five NBA games and that is including the Boston Celtics. And this is their 30th time playing in a Christmas Day game as they travel to New York to take on the Knicks. I'll have highlights right after the break. Chevy for Christmas. This holiday season, people have a lot to say about the Chevy Red Tag sales event. <laughs> Dream truck right there. Great. Wow. Please, 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 please. Santa, I want to go fast. That wow. sounds like Christmas. Find your tag for a total value over $4,000 on this Chevy Equinox. Or current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Equinox for around $159 a month. Visit your main Chevy dealer. What a year it's been. Join us as we look back at 2016, all this week on Today. Oh, Mike. Hey. It's quite the snowman you got there. Yeah, it was quite the sale. I saved big. You? Saved huge. And mine lights up, too. This holiday season, see your GMC dealer and get something you really want. Get nearly 9,700 total value on select specially equipped brand new 2017 Sierra Crew Cab SLT vehicles in stock. Find your dealer at MainBuickGMC.com. Wex's story started over 30 years ago, right here in Portland, Maine. Our technology puts control in the hands of our customers, including fleets, travel agencies, 
and healthcare consumers. We have offices in 10 countries, over 2,500 employees, and we are proud to be headquartered in Maine. To become part of our story, visit wexinc.com. Watch Greenlight Maine right here, Saturday nights at 7.30. Nobody sells for less. Nobody during Mattress Firm's year-end closeout sale. Right now, get a free box with purchase of select mattresses and get up to $300 in free gifts with select mattress set purchases only at Mattress Firm. Watching WCSH New Center 6. Welcome back, everyone. Fans of some NFL teams received a wonderful Christmas present. The Pittsburgh Steelers clinched the AFC North with a 31 27 win over divisional foe Baltimore Ravens. And thanks to the Steelers' win, before even stepping on the field to take on the Broncos, the Kansas City Chiefs locked up a playoff spot for the second straight year. The Patriots had an opportunity to secure the number one seed in the AFC with an Oakland Raiders loss yesterday, but the Pats will need to win against the Dolphins to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. It's a tradition that takes place every Christmas day, and that's the NBA. And for the first time in four years, the Boston Celtics were in the spotlight taking on the New York Knicks. The C's trying to bounce back after a tough loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Let's head to the second half. Boston up 8 out. Horford gets it up top. He drives to the basket and rises for a one-handed flush, giving the C's a 10-point lead. Just a few minutes later, Isaiah Thomas gets the feed and puts up the long-range three ball. It's 69-58 Boston. Fourth quarter, Celtics were in the giving mood. Thomas finds a wide open Kelly Olynyk, and he will knock down a three. Boston still up by double digits, but the Knicks battle their way back down by two with a little over a minute to go. Carmelo Anthony gets the give and go and he lays it in. And so we are tied up at 112. But on the very next Celtics possession, Al Forford works to break loose and finds Marcus Smart all alone in the corner. He hits the three. Celtics hold on to the 119-114 win, and they will host the Grizzlies on Tuesday. And an NBA Finals matchup was renewed between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors. Third quarter, Warriors in control. Kevin Durant drives, and he finishes with a vicious one-handed throwdown. Golden State up 87-79. Fourth quarter, tied up with a little over a minute left. Steph Curry knocks down his second three of the game, putting the Warriors up three. Just under 10 seconds to go, Cavs down one. Kyrie Irving takes it to the hole. He spins off with a shot. It is good. So Cleveland has a one-point lead, and the Warriors have one last chance to take the lead. Kevin Durant gets it on the inbound. He trips. He takes a shot while sitting. It is no good. Cavs win it in epic fashion, 109-108. And so that is their fifth straight win. So they're on a roll right now. I would say so. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Kayla. Christmas usually means a day off with family and friends for many, but that's not so for those who protect and serve our communities. In fact, even the Bangor Police, oh, that's coming up right after this. It's your last chance to save during the final days of the Ford year-end event. Get special final days lease offers across our entire lineup, all from Ford, America's most awarded brand, with the most five-star ratings and award-winning value from Kelly Blue Book. Giving drivers what matters most, that's how you become America's best-selling brand. It's the final days to lease an all-wheel drive Ford SUV starting at $175 a month, or buy with up to $67.50 total savings at your New England Ford dealers. Graham, this is the first solo exhibition of Matisse the Portland Museum of Art has ever had. It is. It's a really exciting opportunity for our members and visitors to see one of the leading artists of the 20th century. These art books really give a nice glimpse into the artistic practice and inspiration of what it means to be an artist. We're really excited because this is the last major exhibition before we reinstall the entire collection in January 2017. The art books of Henri Matisse on view now at the Portland Museum of Art through December 31st. Superstorm El Diavolo is thrashing the coast with severe wind. It's about two climates below zero. 
and colder than a... What are the conditions like out there? Traffic's right paralyzed from the breakdown lane to the hammer down lane. Hey, Todd, are you tracking the path of the storm? Oh, I'm tracking it. Take her in the deep out of God. <laughs> storm center. Snow, sleet, rain, whatever. This year, go all out. Spread some cheer. Cozy up by the fire. And be ready to take your traditions where they've never been before. The countdown is on. The Jeep Big Finish event ends January 3rd. Now current lessees get a low mileage lease on the 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4x4 for $249 a month. It's a little slice of heaven. A weekly look at enjoying the best part of living here in Maine. It's fabulous. Watch the green outdoors, Mondays at 6 on News Center. Christmas usually means a day off with family and friends for many, but that's not so for those who protect and serve our communities. In fact, even the Bangor Police Chief Mark Hathaway was on the clock in the early hours Sunday morning, 1.56 a.m. to be exact. Also, one of his officers could be at home with his son. Sergeant Jason Stewart took to Facebook to show his appreciation. The post has since gained hundreds of reactions and shares. Stewart saying in the post, some good deeds are worth sharing. He told News Center that the chief deserves the credit. And that's going to do it for News Center on the early hours of the day after Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Fun time being with you, too, for the holidays. It was nice Thanks to for joining us. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.